for a limited time, $1 gets you full access to all the automotive industry news and content CBTNews.com has to offer. CBT News. Subscribe today. Welcome to CBT News with Bridget Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBT News. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us. Here's Chris Riggins with today's top stories. Thanks, Bridget. Elon Musk unveiled the third stage of his master plan, which outlined goals for a totally sustainable Earth during the Austin, Texas Gigafactory's Investor Day event on March the 1st. Meanwhile, Tesla's stock tumbled more than 5% after the most recent EV Investor Day, which was high on aspirations but short on details. Plans revealed it will require $10 trillion in investments to achieve this sustainable future powered by renewable energy. In a new AAA survey, 68% of drivers are more fearful of riding in a self-driving vehicle than the 55% in 2022. The study found there are a lot of misconceptions about automated vehicles, including the perception that an operator can sleep behind the wheel of a self-driving vehicle. Even though the majority of new vehicles come with some kind of advanced driver assistance technology, at this time there are no vehicles available for purchase that would allow an operator to completely disengage from the task of driving. Ford is recalling 98,500 older Ranger pickups in the U.S. The recall is the result of a possible incorrect installation of replacement front passenger airbag inflators. While there have been 24 fatalities in the U.S. linked to the Takata airbag recall, Ford says there haven't been any recent crashes or injuries associated with the current recall. Finally, to wrap up our coverage, markets are now betting that inflation, measured by the 12-month change in consumer price index, will fall by roughly 2.8% by October, from 6.4% in January. The Personal Consumption Expenditures, or PCE price index, of the Commerce Department typically tracks inflation slightly higher than the CPI. Therefore, if that association persists, the market CPI projection indicates that by then the PCE inflation would have fallen to about 2.5%, implying the Federal Reserve's work is nearly done. Don't go anywhere. Coming up next is Melinda Zabritsky, Senior Director of Automotive Financial Solutions for Experian. We'll be right back. Delivering the news dealers count on for 10 years. Subscribe today and join thousands of other automotive professionals. CBT News, 10 years strong. According to Experian's State of the Automotive Finance Market Report, average loan amounts are slowly climbing. On today's show, we're pleased to welcome back Melinda Zabritsky, Senior Director of Automotive Financial Solutions for Experian to take a closer look at the key findings. Check it out. Talk to us about um, you know the the average loan amounts. Uh, you know, with it's it, I guess it's no surprise in the in the with it in mind that the average cost of a new car is now right budding on you know fifty thousand dollars, which is incredible. So I guess this goes hand in hand, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the the good news is the rapid growth in the loan amounts is starting to taper off. Hmm. So throughout last year, you know, year over year, we would have these tremendous year over year growth in new loan amounts as well as used. And like I said, it's starting to taper off, but almost every quarter we were hitting record highs. And we ended last year with an average new loan amount of almost $42,000. Wow. $42,000 average loan amount. That is incredible. That, uh, you know, a lot of people I'm sure that they're hearing that number right now are shaking their heads saying, where is this going? You know, and uh, what do you attribute the, the, the kind of the stabilizing of this? And, and what's, what's involved in that? So a lot of it's due to inventory. So we're starting to see dealer inventory improve the really strong competition we had for cars that happened especially about a year and a half ago. Like I said, that's starting to taper off. On the used vehicle side, the values are coming down slightly, but the less good news that we had, especially last year, is while the values are tapering off, of course, our interest rates are continuing to rise. Mm -hmm. And so that has led to the monthly payments just also continuing to climb. Sure. Sure. And, uh, and those are definitely factors in all of that. So what are some of the other highlights from the report? 
Well, on the slightly less good side, we also did see delinquency climb a little bit. Mm. We're pretty much back to some of those pre-COVID levels of delinquency. Okay. Um, loan terms continuing to push out. Uh, we are practically at record highs for the average loan term for both new and used. But also on the positive is our average credit scores continue to climb. We have more consumers who have done a good job of balancing mm. debt. And so we have more consumers who continue to fall into the prime risk ranges. So that, of course, will also help them get some slightly improved interest rate. All right, be sure to watch this interview in its entirety right here at CBTNews.com. That wraps up our show for today, but we invite you to join us back here again tomorrow morning for all the latest news and trends impacting the retail automotive industry. And be sure to follow us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thanks for watching and have a great day. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content. Join the number one most watched newscast in the automotive industry. CBT News, subscribe today.